taking a look at quite a number of laptops now. Reviewed them, shared my thoughts, the good and the bad. But the main system itself, the PC in essence, is just but one part of the equation. Filling up the rest will be the accessories and peripherals, of which one of the most important will be the keyboard. What I have right here is a Razer Onata V2, which is the second revision of the original Onata, featuring that same hybrid mechanical membrane key switches by Razer themselves. As you can tell, it's a full-size keyboard, complete with the number pad. And as far as design goes, it's pretty much the same as the original, with just some slight tweaks here and there. The entire keyboard is made out of various plastics and it does feel really well constructed, with very little flex and having some substantial weight along with it. The keycaps are half height and are made of ABS, while the entire frame does feature a matte finish which will deter fingerprints and the eventual oil stains in the long run. Included with the Onata V2 is a magnetic wrist rest that has a rather plush pillowy cushion that's wrapped in a leatherette material. The wrist rest simply attaches to the keyboard with those magnets and is even strong enough to hold it up vertically, so you can be rest assured that it will stay on your desk no matter how vigorous your gaming becomes. In my opinion, having a wrist rest is a must as it makes for a much better typing experience and for a longer one as well. To further cater to your own preference, you can also raise the entire keyboard via the stops on the underside where you have two levels of adjustment. Personally, I found that using the first level of inclination along with the wrist rest was the most comfortable for me. But as mentioned, you can use it raised or forego it entirely with the wrist rest or not. It's your choice. Now, we move on to what's slightly different on the Ornata V2 and the most prominent would be the inclusion of these media keys on the top right corner along with a scroll wheel. By default, you get previous, play pause, next and the scroll wheel would be your volume control. Of course, since the media keys are taking up that space now, the LED indicators for things like your caps lock or gaming mode have now been relocated to just above the arrow keys. But back to the media keys, or to be more specific, that scroll wheel. As mentioned, by default, it controls volume and if you scroll up and down, the brightness of the white backlight would follow accordingly and if you have it all the way to mute, it stays red. While I do like the inclusion of the scroll wheel, I do find the scrolling action a little rough, especially when you just compare them to their own gaming mice. And you can't change the wheel resistance like that of their Basilisk V2. Because of that, I found that one notch on the scroll wheel changes the volume by multiples of 4 instead of 2. And to top it off, it's not even consistent at that. Sometimes when you flick it hard enough, like really fast, it will change in multiples of 2 and then 4 and then change back here and forth. So it's not a big deal but it's kind of annoying. But back to the main topic and that's the hybrid switches. I don't really know how to quite put it in words but in essence it has the feeling of a razor green mechanical switch the moment you press it but when it bottoms out it gives you that soft and squishy feeling that a membrane switch has. To be honest, it was quite weird at first, but you'll get used to it in due time. For me, it just took a couple of days. In terms of the action, it's somewhere in between tactile and clicky, as it's not really that clicky like that of a Cherry MX Blue or a Razer Green, but it's not exactly the same as a Cherry MX Brown or a Razer Orange because of that membrane. Sound-wise, it's definitely clicky. Though I wouldn't say as distinctively clicky like the Razer Green. On the other hand, it isn't as soft as the Razer Orange either, which I have right on my own personal keyboard, the 10 Killers Black Widow Stealth. So you kind of get the idea, it's sitting somewhere between a Razer Green and a Razer Orange. I guess that's why it's a hybrid. Do note however that because of the unique design of this hybrid switch, you can't really swap it out for any third party keycaps. So if you've damaged it or whatnot, you will either have to send it in for warranty or get an entirely new keyboard. Of course, with Razer, you get full perky RGB. And you do also get this translucent panel which allows the light to emit throughout the entire frame, creating this underglow effect. You can fully customize the lighting to your liking through Synapse 3, and you can even link lighting effects with supported games like Fortnite, Warframe, or Black Desert Online. Synapse 3 is also where you can fully reprogram the function of any individual keys and set up your macros. The last new feature that the Honata V2 has are cable routing options where on the underside of the keyboard, you can choose to have the braided wire off the left, middle, or right, out from the top. So that's the Razer Onata V2 in a gist. Is it a good keyboard? I would say arguably so, I did enjoy my time with it, but personally for me, I would still go back to my 10 Killers Black Widow with the Razer Orange switches. 
I'm not a fan of the loud clicks and I also found my reaction time in games to be slightly slower as I can't really half press the keys on the hybrid switch and I do require more force to initiate the click compared to the Black Widow. But more so than that, I much prefer a 10 killers keyword because that means much more space for mouse movement and in general, a more comfortable gaming experience. Now if you're someone who owns the original Razer Onata, the V2 isn't that much of an upgrade. But for the rest of you out there, if you're looking for something unique, you prefer a full-size keyboard and you miss that feeling of a membrane keyboard, the Razer Onata V2 might be an interesting choice. If you have any questions, drop us a comment down below, subscribe to us if you haven't, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Till the next one, see ya!